hello and, and we are back with another episode of the Empowering Story Live or the Empowering Story Podcast. And today we have again Anika uh, Fidalis, remember the author of Paper Tin, and I call it uh, part two. Right, and the last time we spoke about Annika's story, how she had to go through abuse from her father and her uncle, unfortunately, and it was a very heartfelt story. Also, how she confronted her mom, not fully being by her side, and then and then we today we would like to pick it up from there. But also that she decided to write a book, and there's actually something special about Annika and writing a book because she was already writing a lot of it without knowing that much later in life all these things that she wrote down would t turn into a book. So let's see if she is there. Annika, are you there? Hi yes, there. there you are. <laughs> Welcome back in the Empowering Story Thank Life. You so much and it's good to have you back before we started this show i had to listen back to our first first podcast and so courageous for you to share all these things already yeah and since that um, we did the recording i've been so excited to to jump back on and continue our conversation uh, especially when it comes to uh, uh, the writing process because this has been one of the best uh, decisions i've ever made Cool. So I'm glad to be here. Cool. Thank you. Thanks for hearing that. Yeah, yeah. today we will still find out more about your story, but I would like to be longer about the whole writing and preparing the book. And one of the things that most listeners know that already, but if you're a new listener, the empowering story is all about that. It's healing from sexual abuse for as much as possible, that through healing is possible. We always say healing is a journey. Healing from sexual abuse by sharing your story. And the ultimate way to share your story is maybe actually publishing a book and I have to reach down a little bit because I wanted to show Annika's book and you only know that I go down if you actually watch the podcast right if you listen to the podcast <laughs> then you had no idea what I was doing right so that's the book paper thin I will also put that of course in the show notes so that that you can find it back yeah so I want to both hear more about your story but also about the writing process uh, and why you actually felt that sharing your story could be beneficial for you. And when came the first thoughts in you that you wanted to share your story? It's like I've always known that, that I wanted to write a book, um, mm -hmm. but on a subconscious level, I would say. And even so, I wouldn't, I haven't had the goal of, of uh, creating it or when to do it. It's just been there in, in my mind of bringing it into a book. And yeah, I, it's something that's grown with me, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. If you would ask, I never researched it, but if you ask a lot of people, they probably have that on their mind, right? They, they often say that, yeah, I wanted to write a book. And if you go to a big bookstore in the US, I, I am from the US here, not originally, as you can hear, but I lived for a long time in the US and you go to one of the big bookstores here, Barnes and Nobles. And you look around and there are a lot of people who wrote a book, right? But it's still a very small percentage that actually publish a book. And nowadays with Amazon, hundreds of books are published around the world. And that very often with the help of AI, I think that will goes over as well. But still, it's still a very small percentage that, that will do that. So to have the thought is one. And to actually do it is a whole different thing. And then suddenly we made it real. We'll tell a little bit how that became. It was it was when I met you, Sean, that mm -hmm. uh, just the pieces uh, fell in, into place. Yeah, <laughs> how I'm not sure where to start uh, about telling our, about our relationship. But yeah, me and my husband David, we are uh, supporting people to create their online courses. And uh, that's where we met you, Sean. And what made it so uh, on point for me that it really was the time to take the leap uh, was by my own reaction. Because th at that point in time, I thought that I had processed everything, that I was done. I've done a therapy uh, throughout life in different stages of my life. And it was like all uh, my pieces had fallen into place. I have my husband, I, we have a, our uh, loving daughter, but 
when he told me about you joining the program and helping pe helping women overcome sexual abuse by writing their book and publishing the, their book i couldn't even hear him telling that because my mind just shut off and when he finally came came through and i realized what was happening with myself that i didn't want you to, to acknowledge that part of myself in this new happy life that I've created. I just realized that it's now it's time to to put my story into a book. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. So I hope listeners that you can hear what that was, that process. And it really so I personally have helped women overcoming sexual abuse and dealing it for a very long time and sometimes things happen in your life that you don't even realize that you can use that skill much later and as and as i was thinking to perfecting that business model i told david actually david is annika's husband saying hey i want to bring that in as part of my offering is is i can help people to to do more with the story because your husband asked me hey what is the most significant thing in how you help people and i said that's always story it's always about the story so we started to change the name into the empowering story and then and then i was literally working on that and i had this epiphany and then I was so enthusiastic, so I told David this epiphany about, no, I'm going to help people. And, and David said, that's great. You have the experience, worked years, 15 years for a publishing company. I'm always busy with books. It's almost too obvious to not do it. And then actually Annika said then, put her face in front of the micro. I want that. <laughs> and so yeah. it came together like that. Although it's not the first book that we published in the Empowering Story, Annika is definitely the first person who committed herself to have a story published. And I say that on purpose, Annika, not per se whether you were the first or the, or the fourth or the sixth doesn't really matter so much, is because you went through a process and then I said to you, if we publish the book, it's not only about the publishing. I'm not just a publisher. I still help you through a part of the healing process. Yeah. And yeah. that's when the adventure yeah. started. <laughs> Can you tell you yeah. us a little bit how that went, what yeah. that was? Yeah. And the listeners don't don't as they don't see us. Uh, I, I like to share that I get emotional just by by hearing you telling this. I get the same kind of goosebumps when I heard you putting that into an offer for the first time and uh, raising my hand uh, saying this is for me. Yeah, because that was just the, an amazing point in time. And uh, I'm so glad that I, I joined your program, Sean. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't even tell. Yeah. yeah, that's good to hear, but that's of course not what the podcast is about. It, the podcast exactly. is, is the after exactly. process, but it's good to hear a little bit of yeah. commercial plug-in that, that never hurts the empowering story. But yeah. just listen to you that for me, there was new. I, I didn't even, to be really honest, I didn't even tell Annika how much it would cost, I did nothing. She so just said, yes, yeah. I jump into it. And, and then we started to work and the first work was really just working through the healing process and discover or rediscovering in this case for Annika what your story is about. Yeah, we did that yeah. a little bit yesterday as well. And it's a little bit over yeah. and it comes back in a different way. But there was something else exciting. I did not know that at that time. We didn't know anything about that time. You wrote already since you were very young. You had literally box, a box full, maybe boxes full of journals already. Yeah. So that made my process so exciting because it's been, for me, it's been more of being a detective in my own life. I have a box full of journals and it weighs uh, 16 kilos. <laughs> wow. So I have a, yeah, a lot of journals and letters written to myself. And those were the, the material that I went through at when we started to writing the book. So that's the... Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. No, it's literally what it is. But we're still rediscovering. It is so yeah. for for a lot of people that they have to do that mentally. Yeah, like you go mentally to in your mental journals back to it. That's part of the process. In this case, it was so unique. 
that you already had that not all of our clients have that but the process nevertheless is, is the same only in this case we also decided to print so to speak part of the journals as well so not only tell your story but also connect the pieces of your journal we could not possibly put all the journals on paper because that would be impossible but we so you had to start to make a selection of what you what you wanted to have in the book so how did that go how was that easy did you, did you had a method did you have to read them all again i started with the letters mm -hmm. because i've done done them yearly and answering my own letter from the past year and telling about my current life and putting an attention for the for the future and uh, so i've been pen paling with myself throughout my life and to make the the storyline completed i went through my journals to put pieces into to make it more clear in between the letters so that's how I started it. Yeah. And it's also been a great way for me to have my younger self as a co-writer by, by doing this process. Beautiful. And, yeah. Be yeah. Yeah. Beautifully said. In technical terms, we call that transforming your narrative, right? So the journals, but in this case, they were physically there, but you could also see that they live like that in your mind as just snippets of thoughts and conversations over time you had with yourself. What we try to do in the empowering story is to bring that together and see how that transform yourself and how it in maybe essence also transform the whole story. So even if it if you have as a listener not written down like it already like Annika Annika still had to go through all these thoughts and processes and think about it sometimes even really think about how was I when I wrote that down how was it when I felt this way it's a little bit easier maybe but maybe not even when you go mentally back into your memory and try to remember and piece these things together in a more logical way and doing that i witnessed you doing that literally <laughs> you sometimes sent pictures to me what did that do to you when you were seeing this whole timeline almost coming together um, yeah it, it's been a an emotional uh, journey this mm -hmm. writing process and opening up to to be more compassionate to mm -hmm. my younger self and yeah it's I, I don't find the words for it yeah because i've today i'm at another level than i was when i started this process yeah um yeah i'm listening with awe and respect is there is a willingness that you need to have when you start writing your book or actually when you just go through your narrative, it doesn't always has to become a book, is to revisit the past, which can be very scary, right? But it is in my belief and in the empowering story system or method, it's, if you do that intentionally and with guidance, then it helps you forward. You visit it and you can also now put it in perspective. And you had to put it in perspective but because to some extent, I made you make choices because we cannot print everything, Annika. <laughs> yeah, we have to make yeah. choices. and But the choice that you make has to be in a kind of a logic way. So I've always told you, say, hey, there are always, sometimes you want to tell your story really short. Remember, we have your short story too. Very yeah. short, it's like only four yeah. or six pages. And sometimes you have time to spend an hour with someone and then you can tell a little bit more. And sometimes you have time to ask someone to read your whole book. But in essence, the story is the same. The core is the same. Yeah. And to be able to do that, you demonstrated that so well, that you can do it in these several forms. There is a lot of healing in it. Yeah. How, did you deal, how did you deal with the emotions that came up? Before, please hold that thought, because mm -hmm. I would like to say before, first that writing that short story mm -hmm. was very helpful to be part of that process as well, together with, with other women. And may, yeah, because that made, made me see the core, 
core things uh, yeah that's yeah yeah i definitely remember my question so we can definitely go a little bit more in that short story and you you did that with together with with a few other women and we put that together in an anthology as that's called so that's where you do that and i think we decided so stay tuned for that short story is not in the printed version but we'll put it in the e-version we decided that annika and i so now i said it live here in the podcast and now i'm committed as a publisher to now I have to do it. Now I have to do it. Yeah. I would like to see that as a bonus for everyone. <laughs> it's a bonus for everyone. Yeah, but that's, that was a way to do it. And in the Empowering Story program, and we, there is a point where I ask people, write your story in a short way. You can even do it in two minutes if you can. You don't have to be always be tripped up by that. But you had to get through the emotions of the and now we come back to the motions of yeah. the emotions to be able to do that what was the worst yeah. point what was the worst trigger when you were going through your own story again i would say the the first sections of the book uh, mm -hmm. telling about the trauma and the sexual abuse and having the being present with that little annika five years old yeah it, that that triggered me a lot. And I would also say that it's been a, a roller coaster with emotions getting it done. Because when you're in the, the writing, you need to take time for what comes up as well during the process and, and be uh, taking care of myself during that. So, oh, yeah, tell us a little bit more about that. So, you said two things, right? You need to take time for what comes up. So, let's start there first what that means, translate it so that other people really also get it. Yeah, it's I could have just pushed through and mm. ignored uh, the feeling of sadness for the stuff that uh, how life turned out and reflecting upon what life could have been if I if it would have looked differently, so to speak, growing up like all the relationships with friends that turned out the way they did, not having uh, strong relationships with relatives because I needed to pretend or protect them or in that state of mind of where I was then. Yeah. 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 So the allowance definitely also a big part of what we're doing is uh, you allowed the emotions that came up to be for a while. I thought that was that strong. That's essential. I think in the healing of sexual abuse by revisiting your past, whether it's a true journal or just a memory, these emotions come back and trauma uh, is actually not more than unresolved emotions that want to be expressed so that's the way i uh, should say it so trauma would often not exist if something happens to you and you were able to immediately express everything that you could feel around that event trauma only exists because we store things literally in our body that you can at that moment not fully express and if trauma builds up by abuse that's why it's a special trauma, because it happens often multiple times for people. Like in my case, it happened for years in a row. It's, it's a buildup of unexpressed uh, emotions. So by revisiting them, these emotions come up. And by embracing them instead of suppressing them, the healing takes place, right? And then the other thing that you said is... Yeah, you get that question, how would I have been if all these things didn't happen to me? Now, in our program, we say it's that, that in, in essence, that's a useless question because you would never get an answer to that. But from a healing point of view, take a little bit of time to think about it. Just know that's not the case, but all these things that you then discovered, like you did, that you long for, you can actually apply that to your life right now. There's nothing that stops you now to say, hey, I want to have a more richer relationship with my brother, with my husband, with, and even in your case, which is really special, your mom is really special. Yeah. So rich what you just told us, and I hope people will listen almost back to what happened here, 
because what you unfolded is literally what we stand for and you were working on it so hard. And so I could jump a little bit further. Why did it take us so long then, Annika, for us? If you had these journals already, <laughs> you had it all laid out. Why did it take so long for us to publish your book? And you were the first one to start. And I'm saying this with a little bit smile because there was a lot yeah. going. Yeah. So can you tell the listener why your book is in that sense? Every book is special, of course, but your book is extra special. Yeah, I would say several things, but it's like I have withholded my myself uh, mm. to be able to shine my brightest mm -hmm. it's like my it's um, yeah it's it's hard to me, for me to find the words but what i'm uh, trying to put words upon is that i've been perhaps been afraid to go through the process and making it complete to yeah yeah, I don't find the words for it. <laughs> Could well, you please repeat the question? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, so your book is special and it and it took us longer than the other books that we wrote, uh, maybe because of the journals and all the material that we already had. Uh, and uh, and the way how I see it, so that maybe helps you to come to come to some sort of an answer on this, is the way how I see it is you had a need to make out of that what was it? How many? You want to make sense for other people to see your story, but your story is so much more. It has all these daily journalings and stuff like that. So if you would give that to someone else, they would be overwhelmed. So can we use all those things for other people to help them understand us? And through that, maybe we understand them also better. And that's not an easy thing. So we often hear that, Annika, and, and we didn't talk about it in this way, is that when a sexual abuse person wants to tell their story to someone else, they secretly say to themselves, you could never fully understand what I've been through. And, and maybe that's true. But you tried, and with all the material you had, your utmost best to at least. And I think that's a responsibility that we have to the people that are near to us to help them understand why we are the way we are and we should do the same thing to them obviously but and i think that's was why the struggle was when we went through all your material you go, oh, how can we possibly put that in a way <laughs> together in a still what's it um, let me look at the 226 page book so that it makes sense for other people because yeah, it, yeah there was so much and i think you did that brilliantly by the way your, your choices, you. your choices, and then your own narration telling from your current self to your younger self and the other way around it became a very special book. Like I said, every book is special. And then you decided to say, hey, a lot of people think in a chronological way, right? We need to have to help them also a little bit when happened what so that they can make mm. and then i was not so happy when you said that <laughs> because i think oh there's another layer in there but then i started yeah. to see but I, yeah go yeah and i think it's that's because i've also that's the thing that's been missing in my own story to understand my own timeline and, nice. and being able to put everything in in place so this journey has helped me with that and being able to wrap this into a book and i'm yeah. i'm proud to to have accomplished that yeah, yeah. And you should absolutely and at first I, I i was more thinking of a publisher who had to had more work now but of course i started to embrace the id and I start to also see the deeper meaning is that in the end, what we do is trying to make sense of our own story. And when we have a need to express that to other people, then we even need to make more sense because in our head, a lot of things make sense. But once we start to talk about it, or when definitely when we start to trust it on paper, then it's actually a little bit chaotic. <laughs> and then you did all these elements that you put in with in the beginning an intro and explaining how to read this book and all these elements starts to now help other people to understand you and what you've been through 
and hopefully they recognize mm. some people will recognize themselves in what you have been through and they can learn from that too that effort alone that what you did is very admirable because how often do we take mm. the time for other people to help them to understand us and hopefully you referred it you flip it also to the people that you love and care about how much time do i really take to help them understand them yeah. so that it's not yeah. only about me and which is definitely not the case in you Annika but I hope people see that and I learned that of course as a publisher why books in my mind are always so important because no matter how thick a book is I love biographies and memoirs I love those things it's only a snippet a window in someone's souls or someone's life but it needs to be still complete enough that it is a story and I think you succeeded you succeeded that mm -hmm. with that yeah. So, so but that's beautiful. one of the things that we struggled with the most making that table of content and putting yep. everything yep. into place and and also i think it's part of since uh, this process of writing a book is new to me and not being um, able to see what is a, a table of content and and thinking it that way so um, yeah 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 that was definitely and it's a little bit by design because we're not a pro at that time now you can call yourself a professional writer but we wanted to have it a little bit raw as well so that it comes out very authentic that in other books too and it is the other thing it's an absolute joy to do that with someone and also an honor to do that with someone else and the function that in this case we helped each other through it right does that make sense it's a team it's a team effort and it and it's we were both starting also sometimes a little yeah. bit tired oh my gosh we want to finish it now but then we took the time and say no oh, it's important work let's take the time let's yeah. just let's and just... I, I would say that one one of the things that that was challenging is that it's written in uh, English and they, I wrote it in Swedish and we translated it and <laughs> then we had to go through the process of, of making it correct and when I re uh, read it through and uh, is this a expression that works in English or so we had a difficult time understanding each other through the process and that was what was making it uh, interesting as well. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so too. It's a technical aspect, right? But at the same time, uh, now Annika and I needed to have take time to really understand each other, and then the explaining of the story happens again, and the reprocessing of the story. And uh, in a way, that was maybe unintentional because Annika is clearly the first Swedish person um, who who wrote the book with me and with the empowering story but strangely enough that actually turned out to be one of the most interesting parts of it and i just used i used the swedish and the english text next to each other and i'm dutch by the way for you guys if you didn't figure that out after all these episodes that i did with you guys but if i read swedish out loud in a dutch way I can actually understand a lot. <laughs> I, it doesn't sound Swedish at all, but I just say it in a Dutch way. So that's a little bit, that's a little bit, was helpful. It was helpful. But we had uh, really funny expressions that only work in <laughs> Swedish, of course. And I think, what the, what is that? What is going on here? What is he trying to say? <laughs> and then, yeah, that was funny. Now, luckily, yeah. your husband is he speaks fluent English and was also very helpful at times. But most of the things we figured out ourselves, and it's not just a translated book. I think it's actually written in English, and we will have to translate it back in Swedish. <laughs> so one of these days. So yeah, it was one of the things that I wanted. Yeah. Just, uh, but otherwise, and at, the, and at the same time. I wanted it to come through that that the younger me is my co-writer, so I didn't want to change her language too much either. Uh, a youthful way of expressing myself compared to how I express myself today, and so that was a challenge as well. Yeah, that's a general challenge, by the way, for an editor as well, 
because I edited this book and so far I've edited all the book is you want to make changes for the purpose of making it more readable. But at the same time, you want to leave the voice of the author. In this case, I had to deal with several authors because I had a very young Annika and I'm a little bit older <laughs> Annika. And then the, the Annika that we talk about right now. So we had, we took the time to it. And I'm glad that we did actually, because the way it turns out now is absolute, absolutely beautiful. So I hope, guys, I, I hope you pick it up. The people who are listening to it, if you go, if you haven't heard the part one of Annika's story, go back, then you have a little bit more an idea and the context why we talk about writing a book and why that's so important for the healing of sexual abuse and that it's always a process. Time goes always really fast, but so there's one thing that and that I definitely don't want to miss in this part. Maybe and we probably do a part three too, but many maybe even a part four, Annika. But I was intrigued when you sent me the picture of what you wanted to have as the cover of your book. I was literally, what is that? <laughs> so I'll show it. I show it one more time, and the book cover, the picture, the image, and the title, paper thin, they go together. The, 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 the title by itself, Paper Thin, in, in English could have even a little bit of a negative connotation. But when you see the two together and then with the subtitles, it makes absolutely sense. So can you tell me a little bit what it is? What is that lady on the book and what is all that I see? Yeah, uh, as uh, I have a... Uh, my profession is, since before is that I'm a leader of a living workshop. So mm. I'm supporting people to to um, ex express themselves and uh, um, meet each other through art as a expression. Beautiful. So during that, yeah, and through that um, education I went through, we had a, a an exercise um, to create this combine. Uh, so with the lady on the cover is my body that's been drawn out on the floor. And I was uh, using tissue paper to create the dress and, and complete the person. And through this exercise, we was uh, encouraged to express what's important in life. And this piece of art has been very important to me. So it felt really good to have that as the cover of my book. Yeah, yeah, it turned out, uh, turned out great. And then this backstory is necessary. The backstory, it fits the whole story, even the word paper tin. It's, it says how easily it has, it could have gone way wrong for Annika in her life story. So that's the paper tin of it. Um, but also the art form, even with paper tin material, you held it together in some of fragile. And then at the start of this, and it makes me a little bit emotional to be honest. At the start of our conversation in the pre-talk, you talk about to having the courage to be vulnerable again, which also has to do with the paper tin. To create an art piece that is that fragile, create something beautiful. And then my belief in an empowering story, we believe that, is that the end goal is always to show up vulnerable again. And that means that you can be hurt again. But if you can be hurt again, that's also when you create the deepest connections with other people. So it's that's so true. Yeah, that's what this is about. I already asked you, Annika, this is always a conversation, my podcast, right? So I never know where this goes to. But I already asked you, Annika, once I think I want to have you closer to me and work with me together. Maybe not all the time. I'm, most people know also through this podcast that I'm a dancer. And I create dances and that's, that's, that could be another way of expressing things. And in the somatic work that we do with that, I also dance just because of my passion, but sometimes also as somatic healing work. It's an expression of this. And the way I almost forgot that you did this work in helping people to express their deepest emotion through art, which is dance as well. And if people run away with this idea because they listen to the podcast and that great then so be it that I always have that I have on my list to create weekends and conferences where we come together and where we do this expressive work and where we write together but I think you have a place there to have yeah. a workshop of expressive art I think you have a place there we need to talk about that 
people that are listening to me just say yes Annika do that yeah. <laughs> you know I'm stealing you away from all your other important work that you already <laughs> do <laughs> I would uh, I would love to to hear about that feedback from the listeners if that's in, yeah. in anyone's interest and I would also say that in now when I launched this book and I am having the I'm planning of, on having this book release party I'm also planning the workshop edition of the book release. Yeah. So that would be this first sneak peek of it, what yeah. that could look like using Living Workshop. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Themselves yeah. through art. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's all the way in Sweden, but maybe I can schedule in so way that I can even be there. That would be so awesome. That would be um, awesome. But yeah, so that there is literally no end in how much we can talk about the writing process and how important that is, and then even seeing it as a book. But I, I definitely, before we close the podcast of today, I really want to hear about what it did for you when you finally had the physical book in your hand. How was that I, moment? It's, it's hard to describe in words. Uh, what the feeling is like it's like i'm today i'm <laughs> i'm grounded like i'm feeling going through through it and uh, you can hear I, I can't even <laughs> put it into words i'm yeah it's yeah. huge it's huge okay yeah i can definitely relate to it because i published my own book years ago and so often i take it in my hand also and sometimes i read in my own book and people say that Maybe that's weird, but I hope also a little bit through the first and this episode is that once we write a book and we put it into a physical form, right, we literally put our thoughts and our emotion into words in the most physical way possible. And the ebook is great, but really figured out that that having that on paper and being able to hold it it will always be part of you but i can now finally also put it once in a while to rest put it a little bit aside it's always mine and and just to do that physical almost as a somatic exercise i discovered annika that is that has a lot of power in there I went through it myself and in the end we put it in a system that's now called the Empowering Story Method and I knew what all the other authors have demonstrated that. And I think you should do it and you should still be one of those people like me that still want to touch a book and sometimes yeah. sniff the paper <laughs> and then just read snippets out of it. I've been through your book so often, I, I get always drawn to, to the poems. But yeah, so maybe... I would say... I would say that throughout my life, I've been referring to my story as putting the lid on, wanting to cover it and putting it away or having the urge for someone to lift that lid and, and coming out and show it in the light of life. I would say that having the story put into a book, releasing it for people to read it, uh, even if it's a cover and in in the book, it's now out in the open, and that's the opposite from what I've been living so far. So this is, this has been wow. amazing. Wow, that I could not. That's beautiful. I need to even let myself listen back to that. It's out, and it's a, a, the opposite of what we have tried to do as abused children is to suppress our emotion and our thoughts as if it's something that was our fault because it's not we were ashamed of it for the wrong reasons because we should never be ashamed of it we did a lot of self-blame in it and we should have not and now it's open now we cannot go back now we have to live with the, the fact that we have told that everyone and live up to that thing too which is a great thing i think i've always believed that i'm not the person that likes to rip off the bandage you know not in this case so we do it intentional right it's an intentional process which we do it and and i can only say you work yourself up to be absolutely ready to it I, I cannot wait to see the book launch and all the other things that you are going to give back to this world. It will be beautiful. I, I can also not imagine that we already talked for <laughs> 
for more than 45 minutes, which is always the length of yeah. our podcast. Now, with a little bit of editing, it gets a little bit shorter than that. But yeah. yeah, that's good. I hope, Annika, that we will have another episode, which I already said to our listeners that we would, is now how is that life now after you publish the book or actually after you're done with the story? And I would like to hear more about your dreams and ideals and maybe even your passion and purpose, which is the, the subtitle of my book is Living with Passion and Purpose After Sexual Abuse, which gets partly unlocked through the process. That's that's what I do. So I, I hope you are still willing to talk to me one more time at least and uh, and do them. So, I'm so looking forward to that conversation. Yeah. See? Yeah, see how that worked. Now you can go back because you said it to the whole wild world. <laughs> you go, is there anything you want to leave us about the writing of the book and the publishing of the book that you want to share? I'm I'm just so honored. Yeah, and thank you all for being in, being here with us and listening to this podcast. Yes, same here, same here. Listening to this podcast, obviously, I hope you all find find the link to Annika's book. And it's definitely worthwhile reading. Note that we publish always for three reasons. One is for the personal healing, which you could hear that was true in, in Annika's story too. Secondly, it is to be a light and an encouragement for other people who went through more or less the same. Your story is always unique, but more or less the same which we already had reviews from people that felt that. So I hope you'll be one of them. And then thirdly, and Annika actually endorsed that too, we do believe that the more the world knows about what we have been through as abused children, mm -hmm. that we finally can maybe lower that number of abuse kids, which is still incredibly high in the world. So those are the three, three reasons. So therefore I say, Again, thank you, Annika, for doing this. I know for partly you did it for you, which is which is really great, and that's what you should do. But what we now start to see how many other people you will help through this as well. So hmm. a little bit serious ending of my podcast, mm -hmm. but that's what it is today, Annika. Great to have you here and hope to hear from you back real soon. We make an appointment when we do the next one, and yes. then we'll hear more about Annika's life today and what her plans are. Thank you so much. Yes, and, and from here I say thank you, Annika, until next time. And I'm also going to say thank you to our listeners. So first we say, of course, bye-bye, Annika. Bye. <laughs> And yes, yes, dear listeners, this was another intensive session with Annika and about her writing process. There are so many little gems in there. The one that I that caught me the most was actually caught me a little bit off guard how Annika described how what she has tried to suppress and keep under a lid for so long now is in the open and does the opposite. And she feels that freedom now coming through. So that's beautiful. I'm, I'm going to listen back to that and maybe put it in a quote or something uh, but having said that thank you for listening to the empowering story live uh, please catch us in another episode uh, whether that's with Annika or one of our other authors or just with Sean as I sometimes be alone as well um, I'm going to tell you also where you can find us we can find us always on Apple and Spotify those are the two largest uh, podcast uh, streams but you find us actually on almost all uh, all podcast channels that are out there and it's called the empowering story you can also see us if you want to on youtube at sean Dorf or at my pot up my website www.seandorf.com we have a special website if you want to know more about the program it's called the empowering story.com and we also have a facebook group which is also called the empowering story.com with that i say to you bye bye <laughs>